Good morning. This is Walter Blackwood, and you are watching You Are Love. That stands for Living Out Victory Every Day. This is part four of seven in our first series of Living Out Victory Every Day. I really hope you're enjoying these videos. I know I'm enjoying filming them for you. Last week, we saw how unhealthy habits and patterns we pick up can impact our behaviors. This week, we'll be looking at how we grew up and how our individual childhoods have impacted our lives as we got older. As we grew up, we learned useful survival techniques that helped us deal with conflict and stress. But if we have developed unhealthy techniques, then they don't serve us well in either society or in our walk with God. In a healthy home, communication, love, value, these are all shared constantly and consistently between everyone in the family equally. This is not as leave it to beaver as you might think. Not everything is perfect. People make mistakes, get into arguments, just like in dysfunctional homes. But they forgive and they come back together supporting each other and forgiving mistakes made. However, in a dysfunctional home, one person may demand all the attention and love of the family, leaving little for everyone else. Think of Harry Potter. All the attention and love was given to Dudley, where Harry got nothing. This is a pretty extreme example, but you get the idea. Even when this plays out to a lesser degree though, children and spouses living under these conditions can live deprived of healthy love, emotional growth, and spiritual fulfillment. If you remember back to a few weeks ago, we talked about negative attention seeking, and here is a great example of a time when we might be tempted to act out in order to get what we feel is our fair share of the loved one's attention. This can snowball quite quickly, leading to entire families becoming disconnected from each other emotionally and spiritually. As the family implodes in on itself, they also slide further and further from God. Time to take out your journal. When you pause the video, take some time to pray. For many of you, this will not be a familiar experience, so I'm going to walk you through it. Take a deep breath and relax. Praying is just talking to God. If we want to build up a healthy relationship, we need to be able to communicate, right? So then, praying is how we communicate with God. Talk to God. He knows your heart, so don't worry about saying the wrong thing or following some formula like kneeling or saying the right words. Just talk to Him. Ask Him to help you as you look back into your childhood. How much did family members talk at home? Did you feel safe to talk? What was happening in your life? Finally, how was love communicated to you as you were growing up? I found it very awkward praying when I first became a Christian. It felt a little like talking to myself and I felt stupid. It reminded me of days back when I was in Catholic school as a kid. Thing is, I was not talking to myself and neither are you. God responds to us when we pray to him. For some, he speaks to us in a very literal way, talking to you in the back of your head for others, he may be showing you things or even just soothing your spirit. Even if you didn't hear him today, know that he is talking to you and you will hear him. Just keep up the communication. In a dysfunctional home, different family members will assume different roles to deal with conflict and stress. One family member, for example, might assume the role of a clown attempting to reduce anger and emotional pain in the family, lightening that negative environment through humor, whether it's appropriate or not. Another family member often takes on the role of the hero, being exceptionally good and working hard to try and compensate for the stress brought on by unhealthy family members and distract from the jokes played by the clown. Or they might take on the role of scapegoat. This person acts out not just for attention, but also to distract from the uncomfortable situations, taking almost responsibility for them. Finally, some members just shrink, becoming silent and withdrawing away to escape the conflict entirely by collapsing into themselves. They often hide away in books, movies, magazines, comics, any way to escape the emotional stress. Time to pause the video again. Take some time and look back and ask yourself, as a child, what role did I play? 
try to think of an example or two and, and write them down. Do you still default to that role now at home, work, maybe when visiting family? As a side note, I find that sometimes we combine these roles too. I was both the clown and silent at home, uh, trying to use humor to lighten the situation when I had to and escaping from it when I could. Today, we looked at different unhealthy survival techniques we've developed as children. You did not need to grow up in a broken or abusive home to develop an unhealthy coping strategy. Even in healthy families, we can slip into one or more of these roles. I hope you found something today that applies directly to you. When we shed light on the roots of our behavior, when we like discover these roles, it takes the control away from our hurt and gives it to God. So a little homework for this week. Take five minutes every day and pray. Keep those lines of communication open. Dedicate minutes. It could be right when you get up in the morning or right after dinner. Find a quiet place in the house and just talk to God. If you're mad at God, yell at him. If you're sad about something, then cry and tell him why you're sad. He knows your heart and he can take it. Think about how as a child you yelled at your parents. Maybe you even said you hated them. God is a perfect father. And the same as your parents forgave you, he will forgive you. This has been Walter Blackwood. And remember, you are loved. You are cherished. You are awesome. See you next week. God bless.